Hello, on this quite nice, I'm going to tell you how, using Align Motion, we can animate vectors in order to remove the background or create a blurring effect to give the illusion of distance. Let's get started. So we're going to start off by creating a new project, and I won't bother changing anything right now. First thing I'll do is import the video I'm using to demonstrate this, and it'll let you navigate to it by tapping this icon here. Next up, we're going to create a vector by going here and making sure we're on the first frame of the video. I'm using the panel here and swiping left to move the crosshair to my arm. And I'm going to use this icon down here on the bottom left to place some basic points. You can't see it with this slicing, but there's a thin line that will show up that connects the points. And all we do is keep going and using this icon to drop each point as we go. I'm not going to be super detailed when I go over it the first time, because I can add more after we've connected it all the way through, and we do that by going here and then here. Before I add more points, I'm going to make sure to lower the shape's opacity by leaving the screen and then pressing on the layer again, this time going to colour and fill. We'll ignore all the presets for now and go to the colour picker at the very bottom right. What we're looking for on this screen is the opacity right above the presets. We lower it a little more than half. I still want to see the shape, but I want to be able to see myself as well. After that, we'll just tap on the tick at the top right corner. Right, so now I'll just do what I did last time. Press on an empty area to leave the screen and go back by pressing on the layer again. This time, we'll pick Edit Points. I'm still using the control panel at the bottom here to move each point, but to make it easier to select them, I'm just pressing onto them as they appear on the canvas. We can use this vertical navigation bar to the right as well. To introduce curvature to each point, we just tap this icon here, second from the bottom. Two anchor points will appear here that you can see on the vertical navigation and on the canvas. And I can take this opportunity to correct a mistake I made in my last video. Initially, I was under the impression that both of these anchor points couldn't be moved independently to one another, and that the only thing you could do was make sure you add even more points in order to have more control. If anything, that's bad advice as it would make it hard to select each point. Instead, if you find you can't control each one independently, you need to tap this icon right here and make sure it's not green. Then you can just tap the one you want to move. As you can see, I'm now adding more points and curves. It doesn't need to be perfect in our case, The reason I'm getting this error is because I keep pressing the graph icon with my fat fingers. I should take my own advice and use a stylus really. No, what I'm really trying to do is activate keyframes on each point to make it possible to animate. And you can do this by tapping onto the keyframe tab up here on the top right. After that, you'll select each point on the canvas, using the vertical navigation if you can't see it on the canvas, and pressing this little diamond here with the plus in the middle. Do this for each one. After that's done, we're ready to start animating this shape. Go forward a little bit in the timeline, and you'll see that it will stay in the same position until we correct it. So tap onto the layer and edit points. Like we did last time, we're just going to go to each point and place it back into position. Try not to accidentally move the entire shape. If you do, then you can just tap undo. So I'll just show you one more time before we move on to the next step. We bring the timeline forward a little bit and we'll tap edit points. If any points are slightly off, we'll either tap on it in the canvas itself or scroll to it in the vertical navigation, then bring it back. If you want to change a single curve, make sure the icon here is white.
You might want to periodically check all the keyframes to make sure nothing has screwed up, as sometimes you may add more points and forget to make it friendly to animation. You can just tap either of these two icons next to the play button to skip to the previous or next one. I'm not going to bore you by making you watch the entire thing. So here's the final run through. I'll say it again, it's not perfect, but it'll do the job. I've trimmed the footage down to 10 seconds, as I think it's good enough for demonstration. And if you want to know how you can do that, I'll put a link to my previous video down in the description. So the next thing we're going to do is turn it back into a solid colour. And for that, we can just go into fill colour and select any old preset here. We do this because when we create the initial mask, it will take the opacity into account. Now leave that screen and hold your finger on the top layer until it turns green with a tick next to it. Then you can tap on the layer below, which will also turn green with a tick next to it. You see the three icons at the top next to the trash? We'll tap on the one in the middle. We've now successfully made the mask, but we're not completely done yet. Import the video again and we'll see it appear above the mask. We do want our mask to be on the top, but before that, let's rewind back to the first frame. And with the new video selected, press this icon here to pull it back to the beginning to match the mask layer. Now we can move the layer down. All we need to do now is apply a blur effect to the background and to the mask. So tap on the bottom layer and then effects on the bottom right hand corner. This is where all the layer effects will be listed. But as there's nothing so far, we'll tap on add effect. From here, we'll click on the blur group. Caution blur, standard setting. I'll give this a reasonable amount. The reason our mask requires a little blur as well is because the edges will appear too sharp and it won't look natural at all. If we tap on the layer now tagged as group and mask, we can go to edit group which will allow us to see what we saw earlier. Now we're going to tap on the shape layer and we'll do what we did before. Effects, add effect, blur, Gaussian blur, standard setting. Now to back out of this, we just tap on some empty space and then at the far top left, where as the title of your project and we're done. One drawback to doing this in a line motion is that you'll see the canvas background peeking through the top. So you may want to crop the video in another app or change the background color to try and match your background. So that's just another trick to using a line motion if you plan to use it regularly. There is something empowering to be able to do so much with such a small device. While there is no automatic background removal like in CapCut, this could give you some more control and it is cheaper. At the end of the day, it is up to you. But if you did enjoy what I had to say in this video, I would very much appreciate a like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful week and thank you for watching. Bye now.